Today is Monday, May 3rd. Let's go over your memory scripture this week. Psalms 150 and 6. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalms 150 and 6. Again, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Last week, we talked about the triumphal entry where Jesus would enter into Jerusalem for the last time. He had instructed one of the one of the disciples to get him a donkey and he rode on the donkey as he entered into Jerusalem and everyone was excited. They were shouting Hosanna. They were praising him. Remember, Jesus was pretty famous at this time for his miracles that he had performed his and his teachings as well. After this, him and his disciples celebrated the Last Supper because it was the Passover that was going on in Jerusalem at that time. So him and his disciples gathered together to have the Last Supper. And there Jesus told them that one of them would betray him, which was Judas, and that by the end of the night, all of his disciples would leave him and he would be alone. And so Peter spoke up and said, Lord, I would never leave you. But Jesus told Peter that before the rooster would crow the next morning, Peter would deny the Lord three times. After the Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples went into the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus led them there, and that's where he often would go to pray. So he walked into the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, and he said, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And so he took with him Peter, James, and John, and he went further ahead of the other disciples. And he said to them, he said, My soul is sorrowful, even to death stay here and watch with me and so jesus knew that his time of being crucified was coming soon and this was something he was kind of struggling to go to the cross but this is the man side of jesus this is not his god side because remember he's 100 percent man and 100 percent god and so this weakness that he's feeling the sorrow that he's feeling is his man side knowing that he's about to have to give up his life so he asked his disciples to watch with him as he prayed to just be with him. So he went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed and he said, Oh, my father, if, it's, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but you will. So what Jesus was asking the Lord is he was like, Lord, he said, if father, he said, if possible, could could you take this pain away could it could could there be another way could there be something else we could do so that man could be saved but then he said but not my will but let your will be done so after he prayed he went to the disciples and he found them sleeping so he asked them to watch with him but they ended up falling asleep he says what he says could you not watch with me one hour he says watch and pray lest you enter into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. And so Jesus said, listen, stay awake, stay up with me. So then the second time Jesus walked away and he went to pray again and he prayed the same prayer. He said, oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink, your will be done. And when he went back to the disciples, they had fell asleep again. Jesus tells the disciples to watch again. So then he walks away again to go and pray a third time. And he prayed the same exact prayer. And when he goes to meet the disciples, he says, are you still sleeping and resting? He says, behold, the time has come and the son of man has been betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us be going and see my betrayer is at hand. So what Jesus was telling them in that exact moment, he saw Judas coming. So Judas had already sold out the Lord. If you remember at the last supper, Jesus told him, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. So Judas had met with the Pharisees secretly where they had given him 30 pieces of silver if they would lead him to where Jesus was. They knew that Judas was one of Jesus' disciples. So that means Judas knew everything that was going on with, with Jesus, where he would be, and who Jesus was as well. So they offered Judas this money to betray the Lord, and Judas accepted the money. So this, whatever Jesus said, behold, the betrayer is at hand. Judas had led a crowd of men to Jesus. And when the men came, they had like torches. They had like clubs, like they were going to arrest a criminal. Whenever Jesus wasn't even that, he wasn't a criminal at all. We know that he was completely innocent. They had no reason to arrest him, but it was all because of jealousy. If you remember, they were just upset that the people loved Jesus and that they worshiped him and they wanted to get rid of him. So they were able to get in Judas's ear and 
he betrayed the Lord. And it was for 30 pieces of silver, which is not really much. He betrayed his Lord. And so he led them exactly to where Jesus was here in the Garden of Gethsemane. Whenever Judas led the crowd, he told them that he would show them a sign of who Jesus was because he said, whoever I kiss, he is the one. So that is who you arrest. So when Jesus, when Judas walks up to Jesus, he says, greetings, rabbi, greetings, teacher. And he kissed him. Now, that was a way that they greeted one another at that time. Um, you know, now we will shake hands or we hug one another. And some people do. Like, I'm sure if you see your grandparents, they might kiss you and you they see you and so that was a way of a greeting but Judas knew exactly what he was doing he was giving Jesus up he was betraying the Lord whenever he kissed him but Jesus knew exactly what Judas was doing Judas was not happy to see the Lord and he was trying to greet the Lord Judas was here to betray Jesus so Jesus said friend why have you come and then the men whom was with Judas to arrest the Lord they laid hands on Jesus and took him and then Peter, he took out his sword and he cut off the servant of the high priest. His name was Malchus. He cut off his ear. But Jesus said, Peter, put your sword in its place for all who take the sword will die by the sword. And so the Lord was like, Peter, uh, -uh. It's not the time to fight for this. And it's why Jesus said that was because this was all supposed to happen. This was all the plan of the Lord. This was everything that God had done that would lead to Jesus being crucified. And so the disciples looked at it and thought, oh man, our Lord is being arrested. But God was like, this is the plan that I had. This is what's going to lead him to the cross where he would die for the sins of all people. So that's why Jesus told Peter, don't fight it. Don't try to stop it from happening. Let it go. And Jesus picked up Malchus's ear and he healed him in that moment. So right there in that moment, Jesus had performed a miracle in front of everyone. He healed the, the servant of the high priest. He healed him right there. So right then and there, you should you would think they would be like, man, he really is a miracle worker. But no, they, they had it so in their mind that they wanted to arrest him and get rid of him that this didn't even faze them when he healed Malchus. After they arrested Jesus, they led him to the high priest who would then declare that Jesus was guilty and that his punishment would be death which they had to get that declared by Pilate, which we'll talk about on tomorrow. And so they arrest Jesus. And just like Jesus had told, told the disciples that by the end of the night, they all would leave him. That's exactly what happened. And it was only because they were afraid of what would happen to them. Jesus was arrested. They didn't know what was going on. And so they all left. And so Jesus is alone. Now, one disciple did stay nearby, which is Peter, but he still will deny the Lord, just like the Lord told him. And that will be in our lesson on tomorrow. So here today, we see that Jesus is arrested. Judas has betrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. He has given up his Lord. Judas was with the Lord just like everybody else. He saw the miracles. He saw the teachings. He heard the teachings. He saw everything that Jesus did because he was in the ministry with the Lord. And for 30 pieces of silver for money, he was willing to give up his Lord that easy. So Judas was wrong for what he had done, and he knew that what he did was wrong. So he tried to give the money back to the Pharisees. He tried to, you know, give it back to them. He said, you know what, I'm, I'm guilty of what I've done. I shouldn't have done this. But the Pharisees was like, we don't want this money back. This is blood money. We, we, we're, we don't want it back. You already did the work. You already betrayed the Lord. You do whatever you want with the money. And so Judas didn't want it anymore, but it was too late. He had already did it. He had already betrayed the Lord. As, as the Bible told us, Satan had already entered into his heart and had taken full control of Judas, which led him to betraying his Lord. So Judas couldn't handle the guilt of what he had done. And so he hung himself because of him betraying the Lord. And he knew there was no turning back. He had then given up his Lord. So look at Judas's end. And so this is why we have to stay close to the Lord and make sure that we are rooted in Christ Jesus. Because if we aren't, Satan can come and lead us astray and take us to do whatever it is. And we see what happened with Judas. He betrayed the Lord and look at him. He hung himself. He's dead now because of what he had done. So this is the, the arrest of Jesus. And that completes our Bible lesson on today.